Welcome to vlog 120. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, not so much a topic, and actually it's impressive we're at 120, but we're going to talk about a few videos that I would like to make, or a few topics I would like to cover. Um, this will be more similar to... I did a video like this before where I talked about how I wanted to make an Arknights video, um, and I did that, and I don't like it so much, I'll probably return to the topic again later uh, and do uh, something a little more concise and edit it, recommending why I think it's a really good game. The other topic I haven't reached yet, which is astrology, but I do have some plans for it. Um, and yes, there's noise in the background, but this will be another video like that. And it basically of, um, actually I have greater plans for this vlog, um, other than just kind of, you know, talking about the things I want to talk about. Obviously I'm going to do that. But I guess we'll, s should we start with the bigger? No, we'll get to the bigger stuff. This sort of whole... A sort of whole new approach I want to take to the blog and video making. But let's start with, I, I, I'm looking down at my list here. The, these are sticky notes. So let's start right at the top, I guess, with education. Now education has been an interest of mine for a little bit. And I don't mean that in the sense that I want to be a teacher. Actually, I've been... It has been recommended to me to be a teacher by um, two or three, I think three or maybe more family members. Um, and even um, a co-worker who... Um, um, he, he seemed to like to, to give advice. He was an interesting guy, um, older, probably maybe a decade, probably a couple decades or maybe even more older than me, um, but not like elderly. So older, but not old. Um, he seemed to like to give advice. And that bothered some people, but you know what? His advice wasn't actually bad. It was kind of useful, so I... Um, didn't make a fuss, and eventually, uh, eventually, he um, he also said, because because we were working in like a factory, so it was not a desirable workplace for um, either of us. Uh, he actually had some sort of degree or or qualification or something, and anyway. Um, he told me that, again, I should be, I should become a teacher. And I actually am partially on the path for that. You see, I have, I have a degree in English. Unfortunately, um, a lot of people have a degree in English. The lighting, it was really only good where I was. But I don't want to talk so close to the door. It makes me a little self-conscious. Anyway, in order to get an education degree, it's basically more or less a master's. So you need a you need some sort of undergraduate degree, and then you can get like two years to get your education qualification. Two problems. One is my undergraduate is English and while yes every school doesn't need an English teacher um, all the way to grade 12 actually so they might need a, a, a few or a language teacher um, unfortunately English is not a sort of intimidating I'm not gonna say hard because um, it's not necessarily the case, but it's not a, an intimidating field 
like physics or math or chemistry. Um, so there are a lot of people with English degrees who want to become teachers. And you know what? This country is full, <laughs> especially the province I live in. So if I went to wanted to be a teacher, I'd have to go move like somewhere up north in the Arctic to get a job because in, in places like where I live, they have more than enough teachers. There are probably quite a lot of unemployed teachers who have a lot of student debt and no job, and I don't want to be another one of those. However, I am interested in education. I'm actually not interested in being a like a high school teacher. And one of the reasons for that is because, um, well, because of something I think we all know at some level, to some degree, which is that the current public school system is not good. <laughs> in fact, in many ways, it's quite awful. Um, a lot of people, a lot of... Um, Either uh, high schoolers or uh, recent graduates talk about how they never learned. They never learned how to um, do basic things like their taxes in school or, or how to take care of money and budget. Um, we learn, you know, c complex high level mathematics. Uh, for example, Stick this on here. So I know, for example, that y equals mx plus b is the formula for a linear function. Um, I actually learned that in grade 9, so probably, or perhaps many of you know this formula, obviously y is the, if you were to chart such a function, y would be the y-axis, x would be the x-axis, and m is affecting x, and b is basically the starting point. So I'm not going to teach math right now, but I could plug in values for m and b, and then chart the resulting line on a, uh, on a graph. Um, so then we get quadratic functions, and then uh, you get to do math, um, trans, tra changing the form. Um, so quadratics is where you have like your x is squared. So it'd be like y equals uh, x squared plus x plus b, so something like this. And then you can put that in different forms. Um, I probably can't still do that, but the point I'm making is, like, you know, I might have lost some people. Uh, we talked about the quadratic function. Um, I did take math all the way up to and including grade 12, and then I took calculus and vectors. But I never learned how to make a budget, right? Um, so I can chart, or I used to be able to, I don't know if I could now. Maybe if I had a little time to research and remind myself. But I could chart a quadratic function or a parabola on graph paper, but I could not, coming out of school, um, organize a budget. I mean, it's not hard, but if you don't even have the concept of it, you know, it's probably... At that, you're probably helping <laughs> creditors and, uh, and, you know, credit card companies. And, um, like, maybe you could argue that it's good for the economy because people are spending more. But actually, um, more debt in the economy is not really a good thing. <laughs> As a general principle, I know there are some people who just love to say how you can leverage debt for business reasons, whatever. My discussion is about education, not about uh, finance. Um, 
So not only are they not teaching certain things, and to be honest, uh, historically, personal finance has sort of been the job of the parents. And actually, if you go back very recently, actually, on the historical timeline, 200 years or more, uh, you're going to find that there were no, there weren't really, like, most people taught their kids at home. Um, maybe it was a public school or, or like a religious school, not, not a, not a public school. A lot of the schools were religious. Like for example, the famous writer of Crime and Punishment, uh, Dostoevsky. Um, I think the only reason he got a high school education was because there was a Catholic school that would teach him for free, right? Because if you wanted more education than just grade school, you had to pay for it. And so only rich people got that. But, so like high school used to be optional, right? It used to be like, is this going to be an education video? Anyway, I'll finish the point. Um, and then I'll move on. High school used to be optional, um, and eventually, cat, I can't, eventually, um, I think it became public, so the state was like, you can come get a better education for free, um, and then eventually it became obligatory, and there are actually a lot of people who say it shouldn't be like um it's kind of a, a like a, a treadmill effect where once everybody had high school all employers wanted high school right and now it's get, getting into um degrees like uh, university degrees many jobs are now requiring that you have some degree of some sort. Meanwhile, all the skills you need for many of these entry-level jobs, um, a, you know, grade 8 um, diploma, or not even diploma, but grade 8 qualifications would, would be enough, right? And so that's, uh, that's not anti-education, but um, there are some people, and I don't really have a developed opinion on this, but there are some people who argue that um, high school should go, go back to being optional and that it would be better in some ways. And I don't know what those ways are. Maybe I'll talk about it later. <sighs> um, the way that certain things are being taught... Like, I recently learned that, actually I knew for a long time, one of the primary ways that we integrate, I'm throwing the cat on the bed because he's in the way. Don't eat that plant. He's after the plant. One of the ways that, or one of the, primary ways that we remember things is emotionally and this can be good you know you might remember a fun vacation you had or a great memory as a kid can also be bad emotions people often remember bad things um in vivid detail as well and so um part of learning means bringing things down from the head into the you know the heart, so to speak, feel it, integrating it from just your head knowledge, which could, you know, float away as a lot of the things we learn in school tend to do, um, and bring it into that emotion. And there's neurological reasons for this, like brain science, but I'm not going to get into it. We're going to move on to the next topic. But yeah, I do have an interest in education and the things that have gone wrong in it and wrong in it and the um the history 
how things used to be taught, how things are taught now, how, um, you know, we have, we push kids along through grades, whether they've learned the topics or not the same because of a, uh, factory mentality and industrial mentality a lot of our current schooling structure maybe not the things we teach inside the schools but but the way that schools are set up in general or at the larger scale um, were integrated during the industrial revolution because they wanted to train factory workers we're moving out of the um, actually brutal um, child labor ridden industrial revolution and uh, factory revolution and into the information age all right i've talked about that enough maybe i'll i'll do a little bit of research and do some bullet points and actually have a decent discussion on this um this is supposed to be a short video let's move on to the next pieces the next thing I want to talk about, very briefly, and actually I had a previous take of this part where I um, just talked too much on it, and now is not the time to do that because I'm going to make a vlog on it, which is what I promised last time I um, gave topic videos, which is the astrology episode of the vlog, and I... I I've been making a few plans on it, and I'm going to talk about those plans instead of getting off track like I did before, talking about astrology itself. So part one of the video will be um, basically why I remain skeptical, and probably always will remain skeptical, of astrology. I have not bought into it 100%, and in fact... Um, you know, a rabbi, Eliyahu Jian, who does astrology um, kind of on the side, or maybe he studied it a long time ago before he became a rabbi, but he knows about it. And he said, you know, you should not trust astrology more than 21%. And so there you go. That's a very easy formula for me. I'm not going to trust it 100%. I'm going to trust it maybe 21% at max. Um, you know, so we'll talk about, I'll touch on a few things. Um, basically, you know, astrology has a very long history. It actually used to be taught in universities during the Renaissance, um, you know, alongside other things like astronomy, which is the math of the uh, stars. Um astrology is the, the, the meaning of the stars um, alongside music which I used to know the the seven liberal arts by heart I could probably remember them but I'm not going to now the trivium quadrivium and the two queen disciplines which were philosophy and theology if you're wondering Maybe I'll talk about that in an education vlog, but let's continue. I'm going to talk about the sort of like general stuff, like, you know, um, it's not a cure-all. You can't really tell the future with it. Even actually many professional astrologers aren't even trying to do that anyway. They're more using it as a, as a sort of map of, of the unconscious somehow, because somehow the, the, where the planets were when you were born has some sort of symbolic significance to your inner world and your inner psyche. Um, some people argue with that through Jungian um, synchronicity, which I can talk about in that episode. Um, I don't think it's convincing, but whatever. Um, I have... Yeah, I have a quite a little, quite a lot to say during that section. The second section of the astrology vlog, and, and look at this, critical introduction to uh, psychological astrology, 
with scientific backing. Um, it's not a scientific, you know, it's not a proof that this is scientifically uh, valid, but um, I've read, um, you know, the first 15 or so pages of this, and um, they do reference about, I think, four or five studies in here, like actual studies that were done scientifically by scientists. Um, and there are some fascinating, uh, where is it? There were some fascinating findings, like one of the big arguments in astrology is which house system to use. And I'm not going to explain what that means here, but how the houses are very important in astrology, just, just like the planets are. And there's actually a an argument about how to divide it, divide them. And it turns out that the whole sign houses are sort of, for the thing they measured, not really that accurate. Whereas the Placidus was better, which is, by the way, the most popular one. If you ever go on a website and put your birthday in, they'll use Placidus houses if you also give them the hour, like the time you were born, because that's important in astrology. Um, but apparently the Koch system, K-O-C-H, is a little more accurate than the Placidus. So it's very fascinating. So here you can see the, this whole page of references, right? These are um, these are references to some of them are astrological texts. Here are two more pages of references, and some of them and two more pages are um, actual scientific studies. Fascinating. Part two, I will go into the four layered system of astrology, which is. Um, it's been used for about at least 2,000 years, probably or possibly more, um, but they are the signs, the, the planets or heavenly bodies, heavenly being, you know, sky, heaven, the heavens, you know, so that's another name for the sky. Um, in astrology, they're just called planets, but it can be confusing because they count like the sun and the moon as planets. But that's why when the sun is in a certain sign when you're born, that's your sun sign. And nowadays when people say, what's your sign? And you say, oh, I'm a Gemini or I'm a Capricorn. You're talking about your sun sign. But you also have a Mercury sign. Where was what sign? Which part of the zodiac? was Mercury in when you were born. Um, I think my Mercury sign is Virgo, which apparently is a good placement for, for it. I'll get into that. Then the third part, remember there's four. The third part is the houses, which I'm not going to explain here, as I said before. Um, and the fourth part are the aspects, which are the angles um, between certain planets. So if you want to know if, say, the sun is interacting with the moon in your chart, that is, at the time when you were born, you can look at that angle. So this would be a square, a 90 degree is called a square. That's considered challenging, whatever that means. So I can go into those four parts. Um, I'm by no means an expert. I've only been looking into this for a couple of months. Um, and I by no means buy into it um, entirely. But it is fascinating. You know, there's some sort there's a sort of historical importance, a historical interest um, in it. And um, my... Um, my faith tradition does have a thing or two to say on it as well, so I will prime or um, especially be focusing personally in my own studies on that perspective rather than say, um, well, any other perspective in astrology. 
let's move on. The final part of this will be a look into my uh, this vlog actually because um, I initially wanted to end the vlog at number 72 and I did for about a year with the exception of the one bonus episode 73 which I made right when I moved and I think 74 was sort of a bonus vlog. But then I got encouraged by, um, you know, one person for sure, and then um, a second person, and maybe also a third. So, you know, I have some friends who I know in real life um, who check it out um, often or every once in a while. And one of them encouraged me to make more. In fact, it's kind of reminiscent, more vlog videos, um, it's kind of reminiscent of um, one of the first stories I ever wrote when I first started my website it was Alice and Finch, and it was a, a three-part short story um, with with a sort of extra backstory, like a bonus short story. So you have three parts and a side story, basically. Um, and it was supposed to end on a sort of sad, tragic note, where Alice and Finch, the lovers, you could say, or the uh, romantic interests, get separated. That was it. I was I wasn't planning on writing anymore. But then a comment, somebody left a comment, you know, again, a fan left a comment and said, I can't wait to see what happens next. And I was like, I guess I better make sure something happens next. And it ended up being a short novel, but it ended up being a novel, um, one that I'm still proud of to this day and still need to edit. <laughs> but... Um, just like that here, um, I had a fan say, you should continue the vlog. I really like them. I was like, okay. Basically, I have a, not a problem, but yeah, it's a bit of a problem with the vlog as it is right now. And that is, I basically been using it to, um, to sort of think things through especially those early days where I was like making, I think I made like five or six videos, like long videos on Carl Jung because I was wrestling with Jung and his ideas. And now he's come back to haunt me in the form of psychological astrology that follows the psychology of Jung and integrates it into astrology. However, so that fuzz. Um, <laughs> and I have some ideas. One of them is to start going back to thinking certain things through. I call it here my idea vlogs, um, which I'll get into. Um, I have something else written, but I don't remember what it means. But um, I think I can use this tool and that being the vlog, and um, it should end up more interesting um, for you, the viewer, and more useful for me. So um, hopefully it'll be a win-win. And of course there will be some days where I just want to say stuff and it'll be a regular vlog. Anyway, hope to see you in part two, which I'm not, I was going to record it today, but I'm not going to record it today. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time, which should be very soon if you're watching this far enough out to where I've made part two. Thanks.